Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today I have part two of my bookshelf tour for you, which the whole bookshelf tour I am doing to celebrate my one year on booktube anniversary. I already did my general shelf, which is right here behind me. If you have not seen that yet, I will leave the link in the description box down below. And today I will do my to be read and non-fiction shelf. On this shelf I have, as I said, my to be read books, a few DVDs, all of my non-fiction, the books that I need for university. I also have a few stray fantasy books on this shelf and then I just have general stuff because I have a lot of that on my shelf. But since the last bookshelf tour was pretty long, I don't want to talk too much, but just get right into it. So as you can see, actually this bookshelf tour will be two shelves, but I will just, again, go from top to bottom. And up here I have some notebooks. I just won't show them to you because they're pretty much all empty. I have some pretty cool ones like this one and then some others with some writing advice this says every type of writing is allowed except the boring one so again I probably should use this for writing but it's empty then I have some film stuff I have Pirates of the Caribbean thingy I have two movie books one of Pirates of the Caribbean one of Aragon which I don't know why I bought that because I didn't even like the movie that much <laughs> then I have a collection of all my manga drawings which aren't that good I have a few books on how to draw manga and I worked through all of those but again, I'm not that good. <laughs> here I have a coloring book. That right here are my Copic markers, which I of course used for drawing manga. Then I have two books. I had a lot more of those, but I now only have two. And they are like children's encyclopedias for fantastic animals and supernatural phenomenons. The first one is just called Fantasy and it's about magicians, witches, unicorns. And I don't know how the other one would be translated, but this one is just about supernatural phenomenons that were chronicled. Do you say it like that? Next I have by Stefan Servos. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's a book about Game of Thrones, like a non-fiction book, and there's like really interesting stuff. There's some stuff about the TV show and like how the actors got to their parts. And then there's also just like the parallels between history and Game of Thrones. And I really enjoyed this book and I just read it and it was after I finished the fifth book and... I didn't know what to do because I just wanted to read Game of Thrones. Next I have a non-fiction book by Umberto Eco. I still have to read one of his novels. I would really like to read The Name of the Rose. But this one is called A History of the Legendary Countries and Cities. And it's just... I have not read it yet, but as far as I can tell it's about cities like Atlantis or places like Hogwarts. It's parts of literature and parts of legends and just talking about those places. Then I have by Alberto Ma Magel? Mongel? Bleh. I won't try to pronounce his name. A History of Reading. Then I have my last book related non-fiction book right here and this is The History of Books in 100 Books. And again, the title is self-explanatory. <laughs> this book I got from my mom like years ago and it's called A Daughter Is No Son by Wiebke von Tadden. After that I have three vampire books and of course I read them in my post-twilight phase. The first one is by Rainer M. Köppel and it's called The Vampire Is Us. Then the next one is by Claude Lecouteux and this is called The History of Vampire, Metamorphosis of a Myth. And the last vampire book that I have right here is by Miklos Sir something. 
and it's called The Vampire in Literature and History. Here I have all of my dictionaries as well as some textbooks for languages. I first have a Latin dictionary, my English dictionary, my German dictionary, then this is a textbook for learning French, my French dictionary, my Japanese dictionary, a textbook for learning Japanese, another Japanese dictionary, then this is a travel guide for Japan. This is kanji and kana, Japanese signs, writing, and two Dublin travel guides. Continuing on over here, I have children's books. First, I have Madita by Astrid Lindgren. Then, The Foretelling by Alice Hoffman. Witch Child by Celia Rees. House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the illustrated edition by J.K. Rowling, illustrated by Jim Kay. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And lastly, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And yes, I know I don't own the last one, which kind of bothers me, but no can do. This here is, once again, a shelf with a lot of stuff on it. First, I have this book of Japanese drawings, paintings, um, calligraphy paintings. I don't know, but it's really beautiful. This little balance eagle. This right here is a box that Anna got me or made for me at some point a few years past when I wasn't too happy and I was like sad all the time and she made like a box with some band-aids in it and some candy and nice little sentences to build me up again and I just loved it and I kept it because it's just a nice memory and also it always reminds me that there are people in my life that I can go to when I'm down on the bottom of things. Then I have The Magic of the Earth which is like kind of a tarot card deck thingy and I don't really believe in all that new age stuff but I'm really into it and so Anna and a friend got this for me for my birthday a few years back. Next, this is my little Juliet Marillier cube with one other book. I first, bleh, I first have a little mouse sitting on my books, which is really cute. Then I have the Seven Waters series here, Daughter of the Forest, Son of the Shadows, Child of the Prophecy, Heir to Seven Waters, Seer of Seven Waters, and Heart's Blood, which is not actually part of the Seven Waters series, but just a standalone. Back here I have Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann. I don't know if I have said that yet, but I'm really into Faust, and I'm trying to read as many retellings of the tale as possible. Then I have this little box with nothing in it, and this Dracula caterpillar just chilling there and as you can see he really likes tomatoes. Over here I have the last book in the Seven Waters series, Flame of Seven Waters, the first book in the Shadowfell series, Shadowfell, and the last book I own by Juliet Marley is Wildwood Dancing. The last book that I have on this shelf by Cheryl Jordan is Tanit. And I just love this book and I cried so hard at the ending and this was probably f one of the first books that really made me cry. Here I have another non-fiction shelf. On the very left I have a few just picture books. Planet Earth, which is just like animals and stuff. Two times Cornwall, one is Pen with Moods by David Chapman and the other Cornwall from Above by John Such. Then I have two times the book Tippy from Africa written by Tippy Degre and this is about a girl who basically grew up in the wilderness of Africa uh, because her parents were photographers and I just, she was my icon when I was like 
about seven or something and I just loved her and I read these books so many times. Next I have the Illustrated World History which is just a kind of encyclopedia for children. Then I have a book about the big discoveries like the discovery of America and stuff like that. This is a book about the secrets of humankind and it's kind of like stuff like Stonehenge which we don't really know what it's about exactly. The Secret Code, an encyclopedia of archaeology. Can you tell that I'm really into history? <laughs> an encyclopedia of mythology, mythology of ancient Greece. Next I have just this huge book about Japan. Japan 151, which is kind of just a culture shock book. Next I have two books by this by Nicolas Bouvier, which he wrote about his travels in Japan. Then I have another book about Japan by Claude Lévi-Strauss. And the last two books on the shelf are A History of Japan and Samurai. Another cube full of stuff. This is a lamp which has different colors and doesn't work anymore. I have a huge rubber duck. I used to collect rubber ducks. I have an even bigger one. This is just a photography book that I got from my dad. It's called Saran the Animals and it's just a collection of all the times that he photographed me with animals. And in the back there's a sign that says knowledge speaks but wisdom listens. Let us move in from the other side for once. Here I have all the books that I have started but not yet finished and then some other f books that I haven't even started yet. First I have Thieves Magic by Trudy Canavan, Coraline and Other Stories by Neil Gaiman, The Pages by Murray Bale, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien, Moby Dick by Herman Melville, Mort by Terry Pratchett, Dubliners by James Joyce, Lady Gregory's Complete Irish Mythology with a preface by W.B. Yeats, and these are books that I have not yet read. Book 3 in the Books of Pelennor by Alison Crogon, The Crow. And book 4, The Singing. A Song for Arbonne by Guy G.K. Then I have the Bartimaeus Trilogy by Jonathan Stroud. I have read this trilogy. First, The Amulet of Summerkend, The Golem's Eye and Ptolemy's Gate. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Faust, Part 1 and 2. The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. Awell. The Outlaw Demon Wales and White Witch Black Curse by Kim Harrison. And then this book by Joost Engada, which would translate to the card history? I'm not sure. Continuing with my last nonfiction shelf. A book about translating Shakespeare. Two history books, one about the Hundred Year War and one about the feudal system. A book about funny stuff in history, which is called How Dracula Lost His Head. And now we get into the stuff that I need for uni. First, Small Places, Large Issues by Thomas Erickson. Then this book about, I'm not really sure yet, <laughs> I have not read it yet, by Vienna Tips, but it's also to do with ethnology. Anthropology of Myth by El Kemada. Ethnology, or just like generally a history of ethnology, which is not by one specific author, but just generally by this publishing house. Now we get into the stuff that I need to know for economy. First I have The Capital in the 21st Century by Thomas Piketty. That's by David Graeber. Free Economics by Stephen D. Levitt and Stephen T. Dubner. Economic Policy by those four guys up here. <laughs> then A History of Capitalism and Economic History in Ancient Times. The last book over here is Mathematics for Economic Sciences. Continuing on with the books I have not yet read. Isabel Allende, something with masks. I don't know how to translate this title. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Michael Zeidler, and this title translates to something how Lucas helped Charles Darwin. A Certain Ambiguity by Gaurav Suri and Hartosh Singh Bell. I probably butchered those names. I'm pretty sure I butchered those names. Atonement by Ian McEwan. Walter Moss 
City of Dreaming Books, Windhaven by George R. R. Martin, Lord of the Rings The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Cimmerillion by J.R.R. Tolkien, Brisinger by Christopher Paolini, the third book in the Inheritance Cycle. Shaman's Crossing by Robin Hobb. Sabine Weiss, this title would translate to the book printer. Haruki Murakami, IQ84. Noah Gordon, the physician. Harold Pariga, the witch of Zeil. The second book in the All Souls trilogy, Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. Cry Wolf by Patricia Briggs, Dark Lover by J.R.R. Ward, Darkness Rising by Carrie Arthur, Black Spring by Alison Crogan, The Magician's Apprentice by Trudy Canavan, and The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I am sorry for the change of light right now. I had to recharge my camera and now it's a little bit later, but let's just move on. The next trilogy that I have is the Gallica trilogy by Henri Leuenbrück. And this has not been translated into English, so I don't really know what to call each book. <laughs> then I have Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke, Alcatraz vs. the Scrivener's Bones by Brandon Sanderson, Black Magic Sanction, and Pale Demon also by Kim Harrison, Lady of Darkness, Silverhair the Wanderer, The Earthstone, The Sea Star, The Wind Crystal, and The Jewel of Fire, all by Diana. L. Paxton. Shadow of a Dark Queen Part 1 and Part 2. Rise of a Merchant Prince Part 1 and 2. And Rage of a Demon King Part 1 and 2. All by Raymond Feist. And Dying of the Light by George R. R. Martin. Here we are at the very bottom of things and here are some of my DVDs. Most of them are in my living room but I just have most of my anime DVDs right here. First I have this children's series something that I really loved as a child which is called Tutenstein. Then I have the first two volumes of the anime Kanan. The first volume box thingy of the anime Code Geass. The complete collection of Guardian of the Spirit. I should have all of these, but right now I only have the first, the second and the third film right here. These are all Sims CDs because I was one of those people who played them every day, the whole day. I have the audiobook of The Magician's Guild by Trudy Canavan. Also the soundtrack of The Pirates of the Caribbean. Then I have two audiobooks of Greek myths. I love them as a child. And yeah, they are for children and they're really funny. We are finally at the end. This is my last bookshelf. This here are mostly non-read classics, of which I have a lot because I always see cheap classics and then I think, well, I should buy this book because everybody should have read this book because it's a classic and then I never read it. <laughs> First, I have Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Plays by Oscar Wilde, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, Selected Tales by Edgar Allan Poe, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, Le Mort d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory, The History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey Monmouth, Paradise Lost by John Milton, although I'm technically reading this right now, Camilla by Joseph Chardin Le Fanu, Japanese Tales, Conte et Legende du Pays Breton. This book by Karl May, who is a German author, and I do not know how to translate this title. And The Book Thief by Marcus Susek. Emma by Jane Austen. Alice Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Hamlet by William Shakespeare. And The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. And next I have some French books that I read, well haven't read, but I got them for learning French. L'eau de mort, Notre Dame de Paris by Victor Hugo, which is the hunchback of Notre Dame. But this isn't the original, so don't worry, I'm not that good in French. <laughs> Les enquêtes de l'inspecteur Clicquot, France de la nuit, une foulard pour Jelila. Papillon 
by Henri Charrière, Maigret et le fantôme by Georges Simenon, Nouvelle classique than Dracula by Bram Stalker, which just is like randomly there, I don't know. Histoire de France, Le fantôme de l'opéra by Gaston Leroux, Deux ans de vacances by Jules Verne. Oh, I actually read a Jules Verne book. I didn't know that. <laughs> and the last book for this bookshelf tour is The White Queen by Philippa Gregory. So that was it for this bookshelf tour. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. All the links to my social media are in the description box down below as well. And the next bookshelf tour will be this shelf right here, which is my manga shelf. And I'm probably going to hate myself for doing a bookshelf tour on the shelf because the mangers are like, as you can see, there's just <laughs> no space anywhere and well, whatever. As I said, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!